Well, hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Jason, you can? Yes. Okay. I guess everybody's mic's muted and I'm asking questions. Ah, technology. How's everybody doing? Still asking questions. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started here. Uh, my name is Ryan Christensen. Uh, I work up on the main Logan, Utah State University campus as a videographer in academic media production. Um, and today's topic here is facilitating learning through failure, utilizing mastery paths in Canvas. And the presenter is Jason Tweed. Uh, he received his PhD in criminal justice from the University of North Dakota and his JD from Thomas M. Cooley Law School. He currently works as an assistant professor at USU in the Department of Sociology, Social Work, and Anthropology. Prior to pursuing a career in academia, Jason worked as a prosecutor in Navajo County, Arizona. So let's all welcome Jason. All right, thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Now, um, first things first, you'll notice that I put a PDF, uh, PDF file up in the chat. Um, what that is, is just a step-by-step -step walkthrough of what I'm going to go through in uh, today's presentation. Uh, it's called Setting Up Mastery Pass. I have got a couple of people who have messaged me saying that um, for whatever reason, they're not able to download it, something like that. I can certainly email it to you as soon as we're done here. Um, if you don't have it with you while we're in this presentation, that's not going to, I don't believe, negatively impact you. All it is is just the step-by-step -step process that I'm going to be going through in this training. That way you have it after the fact. So if you are trying to set these things up, you will um, have that quick list of how to do this. Okay, so if um, if you are for um, unable to download it, just send me an email in the chat or your email address in the chat, and I can get it to you um, when the meeting is done. Okay, um, but very um, to give you an outline of what we're doing today. Most of this I want to take going through the process of how to set up mastery paths explaining what they are, how we can use them, creative ways we can implement them in our Canvas courses. Um, you know what, let me try this real quick. Um, there's a couple people here. I may have uploaded the file before a lot of people got on. And so let me just upload this one more time and see if this works here. All right, can everybody see that now? in the chat. If not, keep sending me your email addresses. I'll get it emailed out to everybody. Uh, I thought if I set it right up at the beginning before we started, that would take care of it. Apparently, I had to wait for everyone to be in. So my bad on that. I'll get it to everybody who needs it though. So um, mastery pass in general, they're based on this idea that students learn through failure. We don't do everything right the first time we try it. The first time I played Mario Brothers as a kid, I didn't beat the game. That took countless hours of me sitting in front of my television, learning how to beat King Bowser, right? I didn't, it, many lives, many of those things where I failed, I failed, I failed, and then eventually I got to be a master, right? Not to toot my own horn, but I've spent countless hours on that game. And now I've got, I guess, something to show for it, right? The idea with our students is sort of the same idea. When we give them an assignment, we give them material, expecting them to do it perfectly the first time isn't necessarily realistic. We're asking them in many instances to uh, apply new information that they may not have ever applied. And so through failure, by trying to do something, not doing it correctly, and then learning from your mistakes, students can learn. And Canvas has this uh, function set in, up in it called Mastery Pass that does assist um, or is a nice tool that we can use to try and help students learn through failure. Now, what are mastery paths? Mastery paths are essentially, um, they're just a way to set a track for students. If they are, if they take an assignment, let's say, we give them one assignment, maybe it's out of 10 points and they get four out of 10, okay? What now? Do we just give them the failing grade and then they're on their way? Well, 
if we're wanting to use mastery pass, what we can say is, okay, well, you did bad on that assignment. Let me give you some specialized assignments, some specialized um, readings based on how you did on that assignment to helpfully help you do better the next time around. Um, and so we can create a pathway for students who get a certain score and designate assignments and designate um, pages on um, Canvas, you know, different information, different links to different readings that can be tailored to students who may not have done as well on an assignment. So um, let me go through and show you how these are set up. What I've got here is just a dummy Canvas course I set up. It's a copy of a portion of a course I teach. I do criminal justice courses. Uh, one of them I do in particular is the criminal law course, which is why you can see that up here. Um, can everybody see the uh, Canvas page on there? Is that all good? All right. So first thing you need to do when you are setting up Canvas page or setting up Mastery Pass on Canvas pages, it's not a default tool that is automatically set up when you start a Canvas page. The first thing you have to do is you have to come down to your settings tab, which is usually clear down here at the bottom on your uh, left-hand side with all your tabs. So you have to click on settings. And then if you go over across the top here, there's this other tab called feature previews, okay? What this has is a lot of different things, um, different tools that you can add into everything if you wish. So if you scroll down close to the bottom here, you'll see on this one, I have mastery paths selected with the green arrow. All you have to do on any of these arrows is just click on them and they you know, enable, they turn green, click on them, disable, they go off. So I went in in advance. I don't want to click it off because it's probably going to mess up everything I've designed in my course to show you if I do. But click on it. Once it's green, the mastery path tool will now be enabled in your course. Uh, one thing to remember with this, because you know, one of those things I learned the hard way, I import my courses from semester to semester, keep the general framework of everything that I've put work into to design. If you do not click mastery pass in here first when importing a course that uses mastery pass, you're going to be re-importing and re-establishing a whole lot of these, you know, pathways that you're designing. So make sure if you've got a nice class set up that use, utilizes these mastery pass and you want to use it the next semester, come in here first and select mastery pass before you import the course or you, and you'll save yourself a whole lot of work that way. Okay, questions on this part. This part's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure to get in here and set it up so you can actually use it. Um, let me do this. I'll make sure I've got the chat open on the side in case you've got any questions. Um, so a uh, question here, does that mean students get extra assignments? Um, potentially they get extra assignments. Yes, the, uh, the way I have it set up, they do. Um, what I use Mastery Pass for is I will give them an initial assignment. And if they get anything other than a perfect score, they have the opportunity to go back and take a second assignment. Um, and if they do better on that second assignment, it replaces the uh, assignment from the first or it replaces the score from the first assignment. So the idea is the way I set it up is I give them multiple chances to um, address or show their mastery of the material. If they get it off the bat, fabulous. So yeah, it is a second chance. I even do a third chance and you could do it an indefinite number of chances if you wanted to. Um, the way I do it though, it's not just, I mean, there is a function as some of you might use in Canvas that just says allow multiple attempts. Um, I don't do that because the second assignment I give them is a brand new assignment, new questions. It uh, Questions address the same concepts as the first assignment, but uh, it's not one of those things where it's just, oh, well, I read the feedback and now I can regurgitate the feedback as my new answer and demonstrate that I know something. Um, no, it's I give them a whole new set of questions where they'd still have to apply the same principles just to a new set of facts um, to demonstrate that they really do understand the material, not just know how to copy and paste my feedback that I give them. So yeah, it is the way, um, so the way I use it is uh, multiple chance sort of thing. Could your original assignment be on the mastery path? Um, sort of. 
I, if I'm understanding the question right, I mean, to start off a mastery path, there has to be some initial assignment that gets things rolling. Um, and so from there, you, you would uh, say, well, based on if you get, you know, a score between 100% and 70%, you go this way. If you get it between 70 and 40%, you go this way, 40 and lower this way. So there has to be an initial assignment that sort of sets it off uh, in a direction. So there has to be at least one original assignment somewhere in the Canvas course to get things rolling. But from there, you can have a assignment that was assigned to a specific group within a mastery path and then create more mastery paths from there if you want, if that makes sense. It branches out like a tree. There has to be one original something at the beginning though. So good questions on that. Any others before I jump into sort of how to edit and make assignments with mastery paths. All right, let me uh, get into this here real quick then. What you wanna do then, if you go, let's see, go to the home screen. Let me go to assignments. So um, if you do assignments, what you're going to wanna do is find whichever one you want to be your initial assignment. If you look at how I have them set up here on the Canvas page, I've blocked them off into chunks of three, and I'll get into why I do that here in a second. But with each assignment, um, there's an initial assignment, what I put as in parentheses, attempt one, and then I have multiple other attempts they can do, attempt two and attempt three. So when you're setting up, let me just show you how you would do that with this particular assignment. Normally when you come into an assignment and you click edit, there's usually only two tabs at the top, details and questions if you're doing a quiz that this is set up as. Details is where you do due dates and all that sort of fun stuff. Questions is where you actually put in the questions. But now you'll notice if you've selected that mastery path option in your settings, you'll have mastery paths as a third tab across the top. It won't show up if you don't go and specifically select that in your settings. What you can see here, and this is by default that um, Canvas does that, it gives you three point ranges. And for some reason, unless I can't figure it out, they make you stay with three. You can't just reduce it to two, much as I've wanted to. Um, I think you might be able to add, eh, let me see here. I don't know if you can add a fourth. I haven't tried and I'm not seeing an immediate setting to do that. What I do here, um, if you look at these things here, first off, you've got your point ranges. You have to decide, okay, within what point range is, um, are you gonna make each groups and what assignments, what readings are go going to be assigned based on the score a student gets. So for my assignments, I do them out of 15 points. And so if someone gets a perfect score, to me, there's no point in them doing another assignment, right? They've got, they've demonstrated to me that they've mastered the concept for that week. So I don't give them another assignment. All I do is I put a page on here if you look at uh, week six, attempt one feedback. What that is, is feedback for the questions for that week. So it'll t give them model answers, uh, common mistakes that student ma students make on the questions so that they can see where their answers went amiss, okay? But I mean, obviously if they got 15 out of 15, their answers didn't go that far amiss, right? They did pretty well. Um, and then you'll see the range I did there, um, 15, 14.5 to 15. The reason I do that is if I did 15 to 15, then it would assign them a new assignment down in the bottom anyway, because it would count the range as seven to 7.5 to 15 and it'd be in two different groups. So I found that I do partial, on the assignments, I don't give partial points, I do full points. But if I use partial points, like a 0.5, it helps me delineate those brackets so that Canvas understands understands where I who I actually want to get what. So that's why I've got the weird fractional points in there. But if you look here, then in my other groups, um, if you've got less than the 15 points, not only do you get the feedback from the first attempts, now you've got a new assignment that shows up. Uh, week six scenarios attempt two. So that only shows up if the student does not get the perfect score, okay? So, um, so that's really all it takes. Now those assignments and those pages have to exist first 
obviously, before you can plug them in here. They can just be like a bare bones skeleton thing, right? You can just create the page and name it or create the assignment and name it and then add it here and then go edit them later, you know, adjust the questions, due dates and all that. But they have to at least exist in some format on Canvas, uh, on your Canvas page before you're able to add them uh, in here. So make sure, you know, you do that first when you're setting this up uh, so that they've, uh, so that they're there available for you to do something with, okay? So um, after that, you just hit save down at the bottom. It'll save your mastery pass. Let me show you how this would look in the modules, okay? So if I go to one of my modules, um, this is how I've got them set up. And it looks like to me, right? I've got um, the initial page with the readings and everything. I've got the assignments. And then I got the feedback for the first assignment. Then attempt two, if shows up if the students need it, feedback for that. Attempt three, feedback for that. If we go to student view, just to show you how a student would, uh, would see this. We go student view here, and then I go to modules. Um, I just did a test student and did some examples where they needed all the assignment, had to go through all the attempts and somewhere they didn't need to go through all the attempts. So on week six, you'll see they needed all three attempts. So first attempt, they got the feedback. Second attempt, they can click on the feedback. Third attempt, they can click on the feedback. When we get to week seven though, they did well. They got a perfect score for the first attempt. So they just get the feedback for the first attempt. All that other stuff doesn't add on because they don't, it's nothing that they would need. They got a um, perfect score the first time through, no need to take a second or third attempt, okay? Um, but yeah, that's just how that'll look. And if you go through the other, um, the other weeks here, same thing, you can see, um, this one, they only needed, uh, two attempts or they got to the second attempt. They didn't take the third cause they were happy with their score, even though it wasn't perfect, things like that. Okay. So leave student view. There we are. So that's generally how you'll set up your initial mastery path assignment is you just go to that mastery path tab and then you set up um, the point ranges that you want to have, you know, where you want differential paths for your students. And then you set up what pages and assignments you want them to have there. Any questions on that portion of setting up a mastery path? All right, here's where that gets a little bit trickier. You have to, not only do you have to set up the, what I call the base assignment, the first assignment, but you also have to set up your subsequent assignment. So let me go in on say the second attempt then and show you what you have to do and where the trick is, I guess, with making this all work. Um, let's suppose if someone doesn't get a perfect score, you wanna give them the opportunity to take a second bite at the apple. Um, what you would do then is under details of that second assignment, come down here where it says assign to. Normally you'd have an option that says everybody. If you want this just assigned to the people that didn't get the perfect score, you set it to mastery pass. That will be the new option once you've selected uh, or enabled mastery pass through your settings. So make sure that you do that on the assignment that you want to be you know, optional for those who didn't get a perfect score. You have to go through and do that. Um, let me do this real quick. I need to, I, I wanna share, do, do. give me just a second. There's one picture I wanna show you real quick, just a issue that may run into here. Okay. Let's go on this. share. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see this picture that I've taken? It's just photos in, uh, in Microsoft. But um, here's a problem you're going to run into when you're trying to do um, the mastery pass. The For some reason, Canvas, when you set up a mastery pass, you can set due dates and all of that. 
Um, so I do right here, mastery path, and I have due date June 13th. For some reason, when you, you have a student that gets their score on that, it does assign them to this assignment, but for some reason it creates this whole new assigned to down here. Sometimes you might've seen this, like if you're trying to make a separate due date for one student because they had a family emergency or something like that. It does the same thing. It creates a new assigned to, and then just adds everybody who through the mastery pass got assigned this assignment. The problem with that is it does not add this date. The date you put up here, due date and everything, does not automatically carry over. I have no idea why. Uh, Canvas is aware of it. It's, if you go on Canvas discussion boards, it's much discussed, but um, they say it's a feature, not a bug for some reason, so they're not fixing it. So what you have to do is once one student has taken the mastery, um, been assigned through the mastery path to a second attempt, go in and add the new date, right? Just copy it and you're done. Um, I, again, one of these things I learned the hard way. I go through the first semester of doing this and I realize all these assignments are not being assigned due dates because I thought they were carrying over and in fact, they did not. So a little bit of an issue you have to worry about on that, so, but be aware of that. Um, let's see here. Overall, what is the goal for using a mastery path? So with a mastery path, the idea is if you want to assign a student something uh, or students within your class something different or give them options um, on how to proceed based on a score on an assignment. This allows you the option to do it. The way that I do it is if I have a, I want to see um, competency in, a give, in the topics we go over each week. So if I do, let's go back to this and I'll show you how I use it. Um, Let's go to my assignments. So if I go to assignments and I go here, okay. What I want them to do is if I preview it, they'll go through and they'll answer these questions. I give them, it's criminal law class. So I give them situations that they might encounter as a cop, as a prosecutor, uh, whatever it happens to be. This first question is, asking about assault and battery, right? Is it assault or is it battery? You have somebody who pees on another person in the shower without their consent. Do they know the elements of the crime and can they apply them? And they answer. Same thing, I've got one based on kidnapping versus false imprisonment, then one on rape. All these crimes dealing with uh, offenses against people. They would come in, they would submit their quiz, I would grade it. Now, if they get perfect score, I can look at that and say, okay, they understand the concepts. They understand what differentiates assault and battery, what differentiates kidnapping versus false imprisonment, and they understand the elements of what constitutes a rape. If they get less than a perfect score, on that. That means that somewhere along there, some of the concepts they didn't get. Maybe they got a really low score, a five. Maybe they got uh, not a bad score, like a 12, but they might want to do better. What I then allow is with the mastery path, based on their score, that can now bring up this whole new assignment. And if you look at the whole new assignment, then what it does is is it has similar questions, right? Here's one about assault and battery, but this one isn't about someone peeing on another person without their consent. This one is about a guy pulling a prank on someone in a parking lot, revving his car and driving it at him. Is that an assault or a battery? Then we come on here, another one based on um, kidnapping or versus false imprisonment. Different set of facts, not a lady pushing her mom into the bathroom and locking the door, but a friend pulling a knife on his buddy and telling him to be quiet. Or, and then we have another fact situation with rape. So different questions, but dealing with the same concept. So the idea with the mastery path is after they take the first assignment, they can then, um, they can demonstrate whether they understand the concepts we've gone over in that module, right? So in this section, it's crimes against persons. Do they understand these crimes, the elements of them and how it works? Um, if they get 15 out of 15 the first time, great. But if they don't, by setting up the mastery path, it now makes this um, it now makes this second assignment available to them, where they can get on and they can take a second bite at the apple. So what I do is I give them three shots at it. 
and their highest score is the score that they get for that assignment. And so by get, using the mastery path, it sets up that new uh, assignment for them to take. It allows them to look at the feedback so that they can see from me why they missed the last questions. The idea being, if you messed up on the first one, you should read over the model answers, read over the common mistakes, learn from the mistakes you made in that assignment. Here's a whole new set of questions. Do you understand the concepts and can you apply them to a whole new set of scenarios is the idea with that. Um, there we are. Does that make sense on that? Yeah, uh, but um, could we do this similarly with like multiple attempts on Canvas quizzes and then taking their highest score? Or is there a different, uh, is this something different than that? Like I use a lot of random, I have question banks that I randomly generate questions for each quiz attempt and that shuffles the answers for me in the order. Um, so talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I use that feature too. Usually before they take this, I have a multiple choice quiz that they take and I give them multiple attempts. Um, the difference you run into with that, um, a couple of things. One of them is with the, with the multiple attempts, it is, I mean, if you do random questions, say you got a test bank of hundred and you say, take 25 of them, it's possible they've got, they get a whole new 25 questions when they take a second um, attempt at the quiz, right? Um, but if you, what this does is guarantee that what they get next is something different. So, um, you know, if you have a quiz that's, you know, that you don't use a test bank on, for example, and you just have five questions, if you give them multiple attempts, the idea is they're going back and an uh, answering the same question over again. Um, and I've, I've done those quizzes before, right? You go through and you see which ones you missed and you say, all right, well, the right answer is D. So when I see that next time, just do D. And so a mastery path, similar idea, but it allows you to you know, bypass that. I mean, you sort of can if you use the test bank, but there's always the potential they're gonna get some of the same questions back, et cetera. With using a uh, mastery path, what it does is allow you to say, okay, you specifically get these three questions at first. And then after that, if you didn't do perfect on them and you wanna take a new shot at it, you specifically get these next three questions. So that is the, I mean, that's really the, the big difference between the two is your ability to specify um, exactly what questions they're going to get next. But using the recurring quiz with a test bank, it is a way you can do something similar to this. Um, the other thing you can do with Mastery Pass is not only do you assign new assignments, but you can also assign new readings, uh, provide new feedback based on their score. So maybe you decide, well, maybe if someone's in the C range on the quiz, they may not need a new reading, but if somebody got, you know, in the F range on the quiz, that's maybe an indication they didn't get the first reading. Here's maybe some additional stuff that can help them out. So it does allow you to uh, modulate the feedback you give or the other pages you assign them to, the other readings they get assigned based on the score that they get. So there is that um, functionality to it as well. Cool, I get it now. Um, it looked like you were um, giving different points for like a second attempt versus a third attempt. Are you giving less points when you, when you were showing those in um, that? Let me, let me show you the grades to show you how I do it. If you go to the grade page, what I do is I make every assignment out of 15 points. And so um, if you look right here, you go first student or the first attempt, nine, 12, 14. So the way I have it set up, they're all worth the same amount of points. And then what I do is I set it up so that your highest attempt in this case for the week six scenarios is 14 points. So at the end, um, you have to set up assignment groups and I can get into that here real quick but you set up an assignment group, it gives you the highest score. So 93.33, that's 14 out of 15. So even though the, all these scores are gonna start showing up in their grade book, at the end, the only scores that count are the ones on the different assignment groups. And so they get the highest score out of the three that they get. The idea is hopefully that the more attempts they take, the more feedback they're getting, the more practice they're getting, and you would hope that the later attempts get higher. Not always the case, Right, but we're hope that's the goal with this is to design it for them to get those higher attempts. And then 
at the end, just give them the points on the higher attempt, right? The idea is if you learn from your past mistakes using these mastery paths, I give you the highest out of that. And then we can uh, plug that in at the end. So let's see here. Any questions on that part of it? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, do you have to do all the grading and give the feedback or is that automatic? Um, depends on how you set it up. The way that I've set it up, I do, um, the answers are short answer style, sort of essay style to like three or four sentences that I want students to write. So I go through and grade it myself. You can set this up though, so that the answers are multiple choice. And so it is auto graded. You definitely can do that with this as well. What you can, um, the feedback is also automated as well. So if you look at the modules here, um, let me go again into student view just to show you what a student would see. If they came in um, after taking the first scenario, the feedback would be here. You just say, well, the, if once they're done with the assignment, give them the feedback page, and then this page will now become available to them. And then it will show them all the, you know, show them the question, the way I have it set up, question, model, answer, common mistakes for the question, right? Um, so you can set that all up so it's automatic. It does take some work up front designing the pages, but carrying forward on the courses, it, you can do it that way. So you're not always adding that in. Um, you can still always, you know, I've got a rubric and I'll add in a couple of individualized bits of feedback if they're sometimes answers are so, you know, out in left field compared to the answers that I would expect or some of the common mistakes that I see that I feel like I would need to give some specific feedback and you can still do that, but you can set it up like this where you give the feedback in a new page and um, just make that page show up as one of the things in mastery pass dependent on their score. Um, does that answer what you were looking for there? Yes, thank you. No problem. Now, um, it looks like my time is probably uh, only got a minute or so here. So let me just go through the very last thing just to show you how I do the, uh, you know, making sure that only one grade counts. For that one, what you do is in assignments on assignment tabs, just go to plus group. And what that does is it adds an assignment group. And within the group, you can assign assignments. So what I did here, week six scenarios is my the name of my assignment group. And then I add all three attempts in there. If you look here where it says one rule, what you go into is if you go into the dots and you click edit, for assignment groups, you can put the number of low scores to ignore. So I just put two. So essentially what that does then is because, well, I'll leave that up for people to see. Um, essentially because I've got three assignments, you drop two, whichever one's the highest is the score they get for that assignment group. And that's all that counts. Um, the nice thing with mastery pass on this, when you drop low scores, let's suppose you have a student that only takes the first attempt. Technically there's only one assignment they've completed in that assignment group. If you put drop the two lowest scores, it's not going to drop the one attempt that they took and give them a zero. Um, it's still going to look at the other two, say, nope, they didn't take those. So they're zeros, but you got a perfect score in the first. So we'll give you that score. So luckily, Canvas has that end of it right, how, how they've set this up so that it doesn't, you know, screw the screw that up. So if you're worried about that, like, oh, they're what if they only take one of the assignments or two, they're gonna drop all their scores. No, it's set up nice, luckily, where if you do drop in the lowest scores, it's gonna look at that um, one score that they took and count it as their high score, and then just drop the two as zeros that they didn't take. So it won't mess up your grading on that, thank goodness. Okay, but that's in a nutshell how I've got it set up. Now, just because I use it this way doesn't mean there aren't other ways you can utilize Mastery Pass to allow students multiple attempts to try and encourage them to, um, you know, learn from mistakes and past assignments, things like that. This just happens to be the way that I've done that fits the style I do in my class. So, you know, let them take one attempt, learn from your feedback. Get, take a second attempt and if you, you know learn a bit more if you need to and hopefully by the third attempt you see grades raise and that's been my experience as i'm looking at students you know the ones who take advantage of these multiple attempts throughout the course 
appear to be raising their grades overall, right? Um, you know, you have some students who come in and just do the one attempt and just leave it regardless of their score, which if they're, if they want to, they're certainly welcome to do that. Um, but the ones that do take advantage of the attempts, um, they do, you do see the grades generally improving on each attempt um, as they go through it. So that's the general idea on that. Um, any questions in general about any of that? Um, I know I didn't leave a whole ton here at the end just because I'm trying to <laughs> rush it in by the time we get cut off. Is there any questions on how to set that up? Um, anything like that? Yeah, Atsuko uh, Neely sent me a direct message that asks, uh, do you have to post second and third assignments in the beginning of the semester? Um, or can you add them later on, I guess is the question. Um, yeah, you can add them on later in the semester if you want to. Uh, there's nothing saying that it has to be set up right at the beginning of the semester. Now, um, the one thing you will, I will say on that, after the students have taken the quiz or assignment, however you have it set up, um, you do have to, the mastery pass have to be set up before they take the assignments for the mastery pass to work. So let's suppose you have an assignment in week one and students take the quiz and you realize, man, some of them really could probably use some supplemental reading. I'd like to offer them a new assignment. I'll use mastery pass. At that point, if you add it in, it won't trigger the assignments because the grades existed before your mastery path existed, right? So in order for the mastery path to be valid and, and automatically assign them those things based on their grade, they have to be in place before their grade is given. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. A way I found around this, if you're thinking of doing it after the fact, just like write down student grades on a separate piece of paper reset them, re-add them all back in after you've had the mastery pass, and then it will do it if that ends up being the easier option. It might not be, but you can sort of screw around with it and, and game it that way to make it do it. Thank but you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, any other questions on this? Um, do you activate the student mastery, um, student mastery grade book? Um, when you say activate, is there any, are you saying, is there anything in the grade book that I have to specifically select in order for the um, pass to take um, student mastery grade book? I'm not familiar with, is that a separate setting in the settings for the grade book? I haven't utilized that. So you don't have to set, utilize that or turn it on to do it the way I've done it. Um, all you have to you all you have to turn on to make this work that way is the mastery path option. Um, as long as you've got that, the way I've had it set up, it works. Um, there may be some additional stuff. I'm not familiar with the student mastery grade books. There might be some additional ways you can play with this and have those interact that could, uh, you know, give you some more options on how to do this. But the way I've done it, I've not had to activate that. No. All right. Um, anything, any other questions? I think I've probably just about ran out my time here. All right. If, um, if anybody, let me just put it right here real quick in the chat. I'll just, um, if you have any questions as you're trying to set these up, um, here's my email, just my name at usu.edu. If you just need to hunt me down, I'm in the sociology uh, department under the criminal justice stuff. You can find me there. For those that did send me their email address and um, yeah, Ryan, if you can keep this open for a minute after the meeting so I can copy those down, I'll send you that uh, PDF so you can have the checklist um, and go through and have that as you're trying to implement these. Okay.